Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. I am your host, Paris Lilly, and I'm joined by the rogue one, Gary Witta. Good morning, Paris. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. This is my first time hosting Kind of Funny Games Daily, and uh, let's hope we don't screw this up. But how are you doing today, sir? How's everything been? I'm good. I'm excited to be hosting uh, with you. You know, I, could, I, I like Greg, but in small doses. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, a, little, I, a little goes a long way. So it's nice, it's nice to change it up. I always enjoy hosting with, with guest hosts. You know, it's a different energy. Uh, you and I, obviously, you already know each other from hosting the X-Cast every week. Uh, but this is great. Let's do games daily together. This will be fun. Yeah, let, let's do that. Look, I'm, I'm going to get everything out of the way because uh, I'm the captain. So we're, we're going to do this show my way. So let's just go ahead and start it off by saying that today's stories will include Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition, free via Play at Home on the, on the PlayStation. Microsoft is building a new Windows 10 app store and how Microsoft got Xbox Cloud Gaming to work on iOS. Oh, whoops, see, I almost screwed it up again. And more because <laughs> this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv forward slash kind of funny games if you're watching live you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kind of funny.com forward slash you're wrong if you don't want to watch live you can watch later on youtube.com kind of funny games roosterteeth.com or listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a part of the show head to patreon.com forward slash kind of funny games where bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free along with the exclusive daily show little housekeeping there's a new ps i love you xoxo with janet garcia and that guy blessing who him and I are going to come to blows one day on youtube.com kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe. We want to thank, I want to thank our Patreon producers, Mick at the nanobiologist, Tom Brock, Trent Barry and blackjack today. We're brought to you by DoorDash, express VPN and hello fresh, but I'll tell you about that later. Now, before we get into the actual news and all that spiel, Gary, again, did, this is basically like a mini X cast because it's you and I here. We don't have Mike and we can basically do whatever we want. So before we get into all the news topics of the day, I have a question for you. X cloud is coming to iOS and it's coming to windows 10 PC. That news broke yesterday. Blessing and Tim talked about that, but I kind of want to dive into that really quick. Cause I'm, I'm curious your reaction to that. Is this something that you're excited about? Are you looking forward to this? First of all, I want to say on a personal note, I really hope that you and Blessing never come to blows for yeah. Blessing's sake, because seriously, you two look like Steve Rogers before and after the Super Soldier Serum. <laughs> so I, I, that, that, would be, that would be a gross, gross mismatch. And I very, very hope that now. I don't know what is your beefing about. <laughs> you okay, I, I, I'll, t I'll tell you what the beef is. I'll tell you what the beef is. So I jokingly tweeted out last week about, uh, you know, that whole Kojima rumor stuff. And I was saying, what if... Metal Gear Solid 6, executive producer Hideo Kojima, but made by Arcane Studios. That's all okay. I said. And, and he poo-pooed it immediately and go, why would anyone want that? And he, he hated it. And then people were doing funny, mean memes to me on Twitter. And I was like, that blessing, those kids, I'll get them one day. So that's why I say that. You seem to be, you seem to enjoy beefing with a lot of people. Every time I check in with you on Twitter, Paris, you're beefing with someone. I don't know who it is, but there's a lot of beef going on. Beef's everywhere. Hey, I, I'm a very opinionated guy. That, that's what it is. I like to have opinions. People like to disagree with me. And, you know, we, we tend to have beefs online, but it's all good. That tends to happen to me. I don't know what it is. It's just, you know, I, I just everyone else is really, is really difficult. It's not, I, all I know is it's not me. All the people that I'm beefing with, they're the problem. It's, there's definitely no Absolutely. like pattern here where everyone's beefing with me. Yeah. Um, so as far as xCloud's concerned, listen, you know, as you and I know, because we talk about this stuff every week on the on the XCast, it's obviously an area of special interest for us. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm optimistic about it. And I think as as Microsoft continues to roll out the XCloud stuff, it does seem to be emerging as one of the better thought out, more reliable um uh uh 
approaches to game streaming. Not that there's a ton of, that, that, I mean, that's a low bar, right? What are we comparing them to? Stadia, which is an abject failure, and Luna, which has not yet proven itself, and a bunch of others that are you know, kind of not yet established. Um, I, you know, I've, I've messed around with it. I like what they're doing. I think, you know, get, getting it, you know, the bringing it now to iOS and windows PCs and stuff like this is, is all part of, you know, their overall roadmap for this. It's still very nascent. It's still, you know, in alpha and beta and all different places, but every, every time they announce something new, it, it, you know, it gives the impression that they are committed to this and it's a big plank in their overall, you know, we talk a lot on the X cast about how, the, the the Xbox approach to games is to kind of transcend the hardware and the, the games are the platform, not the hardware that you play them on. And xCloud is a is a big pillar of that strategy. So I'm excited to see them continuing to build it out and grow it and you know more games available to more people in more places. What's what's not to like? I agree. I agree. And that, that's why I wanted to bring it up because um seeing that today it's actually wrong. And we'll talk about this more when we get into actual news, but I think this is a pretty big deal. Um, the fact that we're now going to get cloud gaming on iOS so I can start playing on my iPad. It's gonna be on Windows 10, which means it'll you know be on my laptop, Surface Pro, wh whatever I, I wanna be able to do. Um, and then we'll see moving forward, like you, you brought up the great point many times that eventually this is going to lead it being on smart TV apps. They'll probably create some kind of dongle for people that don't have the built-in app stores in their televisions, but they're taking that Xbox ecosystem and they're putting it everywhere, everywhere. It doesn't matter what your device is. If you want to subscribe to Game Pass, you're going to have access to these games on the go. And the way I've always looked at it as, like, like you mentioned Stadia before, where Stadia tried to make it where this is the way that you play games. And, and I like the approach that Xbox is taking with this, where they're saying, no, this is a supplement. They're not saying this is the only way you can interact with your games. They're basically saying, hey, Here's a nice other way that you can, if you're on the go, if you want to preview a game, you can check it out. And then when you get back home, download it, play it on your console, play it on your PC uh, as you normally would. But like I said, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more. But one did last- you, Sorry, did you, sure. did you see, by the way, just on this point, did you see there was a tweet going around this morning, someone got xCloud running on their on the onboard computer in their Tesla? Yes, like, and this, that's this, the point. Yeah, this, this, awesome. I mean, obviously that's, and obviously that's a homebrew hack, but eventually yeah. you are going to get to this point where- you know, like the, the 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 joke for the last couple of decades is like Doom will run, you know, Doom running on a pocket calculator on your smart fridge, you know, on an ATM. This is obviously not to that insane degree, but I think that's the dream for Game Pass is that if it has a Wi-Fi connection and can and can you know display the visuals, that's literally all you need because all the processing is done, you know, Xbox, your know, server side. Uh, so the idea that Game Pass, well, like you said, I I do, and I've said it a million times. And I study, I really think it's going to probably come to pass. If not this year, then by, by no later than next, you're going to go to Target or Walmart or Best Buy or whatever, or any TV you buy off Amazon or who mm -hmm. or whomever um, is going to have, you know, that little, we, we're all used to seeing that little line of stickers on the bottom of a TV now that shows all the services that are baked in Amazon, Netflix, Disney plus, you know, and there's going to be a little green box next to it that says Xbox game pass. And you're going to, and that's good. And that's going to be baked right into the TV, or you're going to buy a cheap little dongle, a thumbstick that goes back into the back of the TV and gives you access to game pass. It's going to be everywhere. And basically any, any kind of device with a, with a connection and a decent screen is going to be able to run, um, you know, not just game pass games, but ultimately all kinds of streaming services. But we, we talk about uh, X cloud because that's currently the one that is leading the way it seems. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. You're you're fine. Like I said, we'll we'll get into that a little bit more uh, because that beta is going out today as far as the invites. Um, it's it's an email invite that's going out. You go to xbox.com forward slash play, and then you can start streaming these games via your browser. And uh I, I, I still don't have an invite. I would love an invite if I could get one. But one last thing, Xbox, before we jump into the proper news. MLB The Show 21 is officially out today on 420 Day, which is probably why Greg Miller has me hosting it because he dipped into a stash a little early. But um, it's weird. It, it, it's weird when I, I went on Xbox.com today and I saw it there and it had Game Pass and all the logos and everything we talked about. And, and you know, I, obviously I know you're, we've talked about already, you're not a huge baseball fan, but just, just curious, the fact that this is now on Xbox and obviously it's out on PlayStation and on, on PS4 and PS5 today, any, any thoughts about this, this new world we're living in where, where you're starting to see, you know, a major publisher like Sony putting one of their games on Xbox? 
Yeah, we, 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 again, we've talked about this a lot. Yeah, don't forget, you, you subscribe to the X-Cast. Me, Mike, and Paris talk about this <laughs> stuff every week. Um, we, we talk about this a lot, and it is fascinating um, that, you know, it was one of these, you know, we talked about Bethesda as like a big kind of seismic moment in Microsoft kind of laying down a marker and saying, no, this, this, this generation, we're going to get it right, and we're going to make some serious moves. And even, even though it's one game, it is sentimentally and historically a really really important one to see come over to the other side like you said so it's a first party game mlb the show has been you know the, the biggest and the best baseball game and it's been a sony exclusive forever and it's always been one of those things ah well you know should i get an xbox or a playstation well if you like baseball you kind of got to get a playstation that's no longer true anymore and it's no longer true in the most spectacular way not it's not like some other baseball game game came to um xbox to give you an alternative the baseball game came to xbox and it came to xbox in a way that actually makes it a more attractive proposition on xbox because it's on game pass it ain't on it ain't on playstation plus it's on game pass and that is huge that is huge xbox gamers went from like basically famine to feast they had nothing yeah. and now they're like actually we're now the place to play mlb the show this is crazy jeff gerstman from giant bomb um tweeted about this last night he said you know what? i haven't played i don't really care about baseball i have my, my my favorite baseball game is ken griffey baseball on the super nintendo like that's how far back he goes in terms of the last baseball game he cared about he was installing because he's because right. it was just so trippy to see it on his xbox that he just had to he had to check it out um so it's fascinating to see i'm kind of similar to jeff for me it's triple play baseball 98 uh from <laughs> ea sports on, yeah. on the pc that was the one that i loved um, I'm not a, I'm not a particular baseball fan. I don't watch it on TV. I'll occasionally go to a game just because I like a nice day out with my garlic fries and then you know the the, the, the Giants baseball park's a beautiful park. It's a nice day out in the sun. Um, at least at least as as best as I can remember, like in the before times, that's something we all enjoy doing. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll get to do it again. But I actually do enjoy playing. But it's actually how I learned baseball is by playing the game. You know, by getting hands on. And doing it in an interactive way that's actually if you don't know an american guy came to england i came to america as an english person didn't understand nfl football didn't understand mlb baseball but by playing the games that's how i learned the oh now i get it and that's actually right. it's actually a great way to teach someone a new sport um but I, I, I haven't tried it yet it's obviously dropped today on game again no this is the great thing about game pass right what's the harm you're already paying for the subscription Download the game, check it out if you don't like it. And that's the great beauty of Game Pass, right? Is the ability to sample and try a bunch of games. Otherwise, you'd be like, oh, I don't want to take the financial risk of trying this game because, you know, demos kind of went away. Uh, but this with Game Pass is now like even better than having, you know, in, 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 in the Xbox 360 era, every game had a demo. This in a way now is almost better. It's like, you know, all the, all the, best, all the best games, you can actually try the whole thing and actually have the entire game at no real the only th I guess the only thing, the thing that you're really you know, putting at risk is the installed space on your hard drive and, the, and, the, and downloading it if you have a data cap, as many people still do. That's not something to be uh, disregarded. But it's there. It's essentially free. If you already have a Game Pass subscription, which you have an, you have an Xbox, you probably should have one. I don't know why you wouldn't have one. It, 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 the two things going to go hand to hand. Have it, I, I mean, you, you tell me, Paris, how's the game? I haven't played it yet. Is it going to be the show's historically a great game, right? Is this one good? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. And I used to be really big into MLB, the show. Um, and I kind of fell off the, the past few years. I, I fully admit that. I just kind of got over sports games in general where, um, you know, I needed a break from them. But with this opportunity, I've, I've been playing on the PlayStation 5, ironically enough. I haven't played it on Xbox yet, um, but it's great. I mean, it's, it's still, you know, it, its reputation still precedes it where it is the best sports simulation out there. I've been doing a lot of Road to Show on there. I know there's a Diamond Dynasty stuff. I haven't done that just yet. Um, now that it's officially out, um, I'm really looking forward to jumping into some online stuff, you know, potentially do some cross-play thing with people on Xbox. My son has been playing it on Xbox, um, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it again. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I, I think Barrett and I have talked about playing because yeah. he's a big MLB, the show yeah. guy. Um, I think we've talked about putting some games together, uh, cause I, I, I look forward to playing. I saw also, um, I, I don't know. If, I I didn't even know this. But apparently, it has like a ballpark designer. You can, you yes, can even like create design. designer. Like so, obviously the, the obviously the the diamond itself is going to be what it is. Like so, what you're designing like the bleachers and like the like, what what are you doing when you create a ballpark in this I, game? I haven't done it myself, but ironically enough, everyone go go listen or watch the last episode of the X Cast where we had our review on there. Barrett joined myself and Mike, and and we reviewed MLB the show. But talking about it on there. Um, yeah, you, you can go in. You can down to the the vendors that are selling <laughs> hot dogs in the stands. You can 
you know, create your own stadium and do what you want. So I'm really That's looking fun. forward. I mean, I could, I could see yeah. myself getting into that aspect. That could be fun. Yeah, yeah. I think what the community is going to be able to do with that is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, I'm give it's, that a try. it's weird, man. It, it is weird to see it on Xbox and on Game Pass. And, you know, I, I, I know, you know, when you talk about me having Twitter beef, I, I say this on Twitter all the time. I think Game Pass is the future of how we're going to consume games for everything that you've already said. So, you know, you don't have to do it. It's going to be a choice. But again, I'll let everyone know if you're new to myself, you're new to Gary watching this, go check out XCast. I mean, being dead serious, you know, every Saturday at 6 a.m. Pacific and uh, we talk about Game Pass and everything in the world of Xbox. But let's move on. Let's get into the actual news itself, which will have more Microsoft, but we're going to kick it off with PlayStation. So for now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's Five stories today. Ah, uh, Baker's dozen. <laughs> and you notice I made I made him do it extra long because this is my show. I'm the. I was, I was thinking like, wow, Kevin's really uh, kind of over overdoing it today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we, we have five new stories today, and the first one is going to be Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition is free, and via the PlayStation blog, Sid Schumann, the se senior director over there for content communication, writes, "Hi again." Back in March, we shared the news that PlayStation fans can get 10 free games this spring to help make time spent at home a bit more fun. We're really excited to highlight some of our favorite indie partners, and I really hope you had a chance to download these amazing games. Did you forget to download your free games for PS4 and PlayStation VR? No worries, we have you covered. This amazing selection of PlayStation 4 games and PlayStation VR games will be available free to download until April 22nd at 8 p.m. Pacific. I also mentioned that Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition is coming to PlayStation fans for free as a part of Play at Home 2021. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition is available to download free starting on April 19th at 8 p.m. Pacific until May 14th at 8 p.m. Pacific. And PlayStation also promises more to come from the Play at Home initiative. Now, Gary, I, I wanted to start off with this one because, and I also have a reader question I'm gonna throw in here at the end, but I find the Play at Home initiative a great thing. I'm, I'm really liking what PlayStation has done with this. And, and I'm personally a huge Horizon Zero Dawn fan. So I, I recommend for anyone that is on the PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5, Take advantage of this. Download it. It's the complete edition. Comes with all the DLC, everything. And I, I, I think you're going to love it. And we know um, um, Forbidden West is coming, knock on wood, this fall if it doesn't get delayed. And uh, I think this will be a great time to jump in and check out Horizon Zero Dawn. But but Gary, I'm, I'm very curious. What are your thoughts on the whole Play at Home initiative and the fact they're giving out uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for free? Well, first of all, on Horizon Zero Dawn, it really is a great game. I, I didn't play it, but I, I, sat, I essentially experienced the whole thing because I sat and watched my wife play the whole thing. She yeah. loved it. And she did all the DLC and, and everything. She loved Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't know. It's one of those games that she has like well over 100 hours in. Like one of those games that you can really, really get your teeth into. Beautiful, gorgeous game. Um, I don't know. Did, it get, did, it get any, did Horizon get any kind of PS5 enhancement? No. Yeah, because we played Not it yet. on the Pro. I, yeah. I, you know, in the same way that God of War did, I think we're going to want to see that, you know, 4K, 60 or whatever, some kind of glow up for Horizon would, would be nice at some point. Uh, but even just on a PlayStation 4 Pro, even though it's one of those games that makes your PS4 Pro sound like a leaf blower, it's gorgeous in 4K. Play it in performance mode. Don't play it in, 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 in uh, resolution mode, as is true for most of these games. You're always better off, I think, picking frame rate over resolution, as long as there's a trade-off. Um, but it's a wonderful game. And yeah, it's a great, it's not, it's not like a, like a bargain bin game. that This is one of their top, top, top games. Horizon Zero Dawn is like absolutely S-tier PlayStation uh, game up there with, you know, Tsushima and God of War and the, 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 the biggest and best exclusive Spider-Man, the biggest and best exclusive titles that they have to offer. So the fact that they're making this one available for free is super, super great. Again, it's a nice way to tee up the, the new one that's coming. Um, but it's just, a, it's just a great deal. And, I, and I'm not entirely sure what is going on holistically with sony's plans to kind of you know make more games available you know for free or you know some some kind of package 
uh, to their gamers. Right now, you know, I still believe that if you look at Game Pass and if you look at like PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now and the offerings that they have, Game Pass is still way, way ahead in terms of value. And we've said many times on the Xbox, like if Sony wants to, you know, prov- you know basically kind of have a bulwark against this very aggressive um, assault that they're dealing with right now from, from Microsoft and Game Pass on the Xbox side, they, I, they really, I think ultimately they need to build an offering that is as compelling as Game Pass. They don't have that now. They have the tools for it, but they they don't. They have it split between, there's this weird bifurcation between PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. I recently uh, gifted my my old PlayStation uh, Pro to, when we got a PlayStation 5, I gave one of my old PlayStations to a friend of ours. And when I gave it to them, I, I should oh, I should get them a gift card so they can go. I didn't have any, didn't have any box games to give them. So I was like, well, I should get them like a gift card or something just so they can go get something off the store or get a PlayStation Plus subscription. And when I went when I went to the store, you know, with the place where they have all the Olive Garden and Target gift cards and things hanging on the rack, they had one for PlayStation Plus and one for PlayStation Now. And I actually had to Google it. Like, what is the difference between these two offerings? Like, they both give you free games and they right. both they both have, but it's confusing and it's not one simple thing it's kind of like the confusion a little bit that microsoft's kind of trying to get rid of between game pass and games with gold like games of gold's going away so that so we can all understand that game pass is where you want to be so there's still a little bit of confusion i think between the offerings and even if you have both i don't think it's as compelling as game pass so i think holistically um sony i think needs to do a better job of kind of repositioning and kind of beefing up it's it's whatever its game pass competitor is ultimately going to be but in the meantime offering people like at, like actual top tier games like horizon and not just kind of the bargain bin stuff is at least a step in the right direction so you know well played sony on that one go if, if you haven't played horizon and you have access to this via via your playstation go get it because it's a great game yeah absolutely and kind of going off of what you just said and and i'll lead this right into the question that we got because i think this is relevant as well um I don't think they need a quote unquote 100% Game Pass competitor, but what I think would be a great start for them would be to take the best bits of PlayStation Now, the best bits of PlayStation Plus, and merge them into one thing and and just go from there. Um, You know, again, not trying to make the direct comparison to Xbox, but I just don't know if PlayStation can actually make the aggressive third party uh, deals and partnerships that Xbox has done just from a financial perspective. Again, I don't know the numbers, but at the same time, I look at PlayStation's exclusive lineup and it sells itself. It really does. Um, They have so many must have games that, yeah, I'm going to go pick up a PlayStation 5 because I want I want to play those games. But along those lines, I want to bring this question in because I I think this is relevant and I think this will be a good discussion just overall with PlayStation as as we go into the summer. And um, that is going to be from Ben as Conspiracy Steve. He used Patreon.com forward slash kind of funny games and he wrote in and said this. Hi, Paris and Gary. Yesterday's PlayStation 3 Vita store reversal news was great for game preservation, great for developers, great for gamers. But why has there been so much praise given to Jim Ryan for the reversal? Didn't PlayStation just manipulate their biggest gaming fans in order to fund the store staying open? The funding is not just money spent. It's in the data that was gathered. Outcry alone is not the reason this was reversed. And he goes on to say every time an old console game came online and spent money on games, they were both the money and the data that X amount of these devices are still out there and the owners of them will still spend money on old games. That data also showed the amount of PSPs that came online was not worth keeping that store open. Reading it verbatim. Uh, you can't tell me that this wasn't the plan all along. The let's see how much they really love these old games by threatening to take them away forever plan. The plan worked. The bad, the bad press lasted about a week, and the apology is gaining praise like Jim Rang is changing his ways. He's the same, and this was just another business plan to get as much money from the consumer as possible. Thank you for using Conspiracy Steve, number one, but appreciate that. So the reason I wanted to read that is because I saw a lot of the sentiment on on social media yesterday after the reversal, which honestly, it was a good thing because it was a bad move in the first place. And kind of my thought on this, Gary, wasn't so much that Jim Ryan needs play needs praise or Jim Ryan needs to be a villain or anything like that. I, I personally think they do have some kind of plan B. 
for these Vita games, for these PS3 games, some type of backwards compatibility compatibility games preservation plan. I just don't think it's ready. That that's how I see it. I think what you've seen the competition do, they've been planning for this since 2015 and we're seeing the fruits of that labor. I think PlayStation is just simply a little behind on that. So the mistake was announcing that you were gonna get rid of the PS3 and the Vita store without having a reasonable alternative ready to go. Um, clearly they've, they've seen what, what the public feedback has been and they reversed it. They're not a perfect company, they made a mistake. I don't think there was some deep conspiracy to data mine how many people still had PSPs or Vitas or anything like that. I just simply think, hey, they they know they have a plan. They announced closing this story early, not thinking it was gonna be that big of a deal. And then they realized, no, absolutely. Game preservation and backwards compatibility is a big deal in today's age and they need to take it seriously. So again, I'm just curious your, your thoughts on all that as well. Um. Yeah, I think, you know, let's let's take the tinfoil hats off for a second. Not everything is a conspiracy <laughs> wrapped inside a conspiracy. Sometimes the simplest explanation is usually the right one. And I think this is I think this probably is I, I only I only skim the headlines on this because uh, PSV the PS3 Vita games in the store. That's not something I'm particularly um, in, I mean, I'm, I'm glad for other people who care about those games um, that they'll still be able to get access to them. I'm glad for game preservationists. Again, that that point was made. Uh, again, um, game preservationists and historians hate digital games that don't have physical versions because it makes their job harder. So but at least keeping the games alive uh, on the unavailable on these services is better than nothing. So, you know, good for, again, for people who care about gaming history and for people that care about those particular games, this is good. I don't think it's any more complicated than what happened with Xbox a while back. Remember when Xbox tried to start uh, charging for... Yeah. Um, stuff again and, and, and people freaked out and, and microsoft went oh shit like we got this wrong and and backpedaled spectacularly uh to the extent that by the time they were done they were actually offering gamers a better deal than the one they had started with because they realized they had screwed up so badly sometimes you just screw up microsoft realized uh that they screwed up uh sony i think now are realizing that they screwed up I'm hoping that very soon the people behind this fucking wretched European Super League will realize that they've screwed up because every football fan and coach and player and person who actually gives a shit about football in the world is saying, this is an abomination, fucking stop it. Uh, and I really hope they will come to that. This is obviously egregiously off topic, but it, the, the same point's being made. Some, sometimes companies think, here's a great way to make money. People will love this, right? Put it out there. Oh shit, like we got this wrong. Yeah. We have to fix it. So I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm optimistic that um, you know pow always power to the players, power to the fans. If you make enough noise, in if if enough people make enough noise all at the same time, you can make a difference. We've seen it with Microsoft. We're seeing it now with Sony. I hope we'll see it in the world of uh, international football um, and you know and and uh, the the Super League and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's 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 encouraging to to see that people. Um, you know, we're, you know, we talk all the time about the, the big corporations don't give a fuck about us. They don't, I, they don't give a fuck about you, but they do give a fuck about the money in your pocket. Yeah, and that that's the true. power that you, they, they, that's the power that you have. Um, and again, with the super league thing, you know, I, I really hope that, you know, for, for these big, for these big clubs that have gotten used to playing to empty, to empty stadiums of the past year, get used to it. Cause no one's showing up for your bullshit super league. Sorry. I know I'm hijacking the podcast, but it's something I feel, uh, very, uh, very, uh, passionate about. Uh, good for Sony, PS3, Vita games, still a lot. Yeah, dead dead systems, but the games live on. Good for them. I'm, I'm glad that they saw the error of their ways. Completely agree. Like, like I said before, I do think I, I've come around to realize that game preservation is a real thing that, that we have to keep the legacy of these old games around. So these companies need to make sure there's some viable way to still access them. And, you know, looks like Sony realized they made a mistake and they're correcting it. So good for them. But moving on. Story number two, Microsoft is building a new app store for Windows 10 in a major revitalization effort. And this is coming via Windows Central. Zach Bowden writes, Microsoft is working on a brand new store app for Windows 10 that will introduce a modern and fluid user interface, as well as bring changes to the policies that govern what kind of apps can be submitted to the store by developers. According to sources familiar with the matter, this new store will pave the way to a revitalized storefront that's more open to both end users and developers. This will allow developers to submit unpackaged Win32 apps to the store, allow developers to host apps and updates on their own content delivery network, 
allow developers to use third-party commerce platforms and apps, and Microsoft wants the store to be a more open platform and for gaming, this could open the door for a more Steam-like experience for developers and end users. So Gary, um, I actually think this is kind of a big deal. Um, I'll say again, we talked about this on the Xcast many times. I don't like the Windows 10 store. I don't like the Xbox app as it currently exists on Windows 10. Um, I've always thought it, it's needed a major overhaul. So seeing this news that they're clearly self-aware of it, they're trying to enable developers to have a little more freedom inside, you know, inside there with the SDK and everything that they're providing now. I think this is a good thing. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Yeah, I, we, we talked about this briefly right before the show. I think anything that makes it easier for developers of all sizes, particularly the little ones, the little guys, you know, like, you know, we're living in an age now of, of indie game development, which actually in a way is kind of a throwback to the kind of games that I grew up. When I grew up in the 8-bit era in the 1980s and I was playing games on the Commodore 64 and the Sinclair Spectrum, those were games that are often made by one person, one developer, like in their bedroom, literally with, you know, a book on, you know, a machine code and assembly language or whatever, and they made their own games. And some of the biggest games of the era came from one person who just basically were making these kind of homebrew indie games. Those were indie games before indie games existed. Um, and I'm so, and, and that went away for a long time when consoles came along and became really popular. Uh, it, it, you know, we moved away from home uh, computer game development, which was an open platform to console game development, which is a closed one. And a lot of that indie, indie development went away. Now it's back, thank goodness. Um, but for some, but for someone at home who's thinking, hmm, I'd love to make a game for the Nintendo Switch or the Xbox or the PlayStation. I've got the technical, I know how to program, but I don't have the tools. I don't know how to get in the door. Um, anything that kind of makes that easier, uh, both to both to build the game and then deliver it to an audience, obviously is going to be welcome. So if Microsoft is rolling out tools that will help at both ends of the process, but you know, here, here, here are some tools that will make it easier for you to build the game. And now here are some tools that will make it easier for you to have that game discovered by an audience. Great, I'm all for that. I don't know the details. I, I skimmed the story this morning. So, you know, I, I'm not a game developer, so I'm not able to kind of scrutinize and go, hmm, that's good, but it'd be more useful to develop if you did this or that. Like, I'm not going to speak to the details. But in the abstract, in, in the big picture of it, um, and I know it's a very reductive thing to say, and it sounds kind of obvious, but this seems to be what they're doing. They want to make it easier for people to make games at all levels and, and then make it easier for people to discover the games. The Microsoft Store is not great. The Xbox app on Windows is not great. We both know that. They both could mm -hmm. be a lot better, but it's, enc it's encouraging signs that, that Microsoft seems to recognize that and are trying to improve the system you know, from end to end. Yeah, completely agree. And, that, and that's kind of the main takeaway that I, I see for this. It's kind of... Uh a win-win for both sides, developer and end user, where Microsoft is aware there is a problem. They need to fix it. They need to make it easier for developers to deliver their content. Kind of the main thing that I, I saw this morning, a lot of people just got excited about more mod support um, with various PC games. And then again, you're talking the end user experience. Like I said, I am not a fan of that Windows 10 store. I, I prefer Steam when, when it comes to interacting with my PC game. So if they can get closer to that experience, that'll make me more ex excited, whatever the words you want to use, that'll make me more willing to want to jump in to the user experience that they currently have with the Xbox app and the Windows 10 store as a whole. So like I said, this is a good thing. So kind of on the heels of that, story number three is here's how Microsoft got Xbox, 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 how am I saying this? Yikes. Here's how Microsoft got Xbox Cloud Gaming to work with iPhone and iPad. Dan Thorpe Lancaster, once again at Windows Central, writes, To get Xbox Cloud Gaming to work through browsers, Microsoft worked with Rainway. Some will recognize the Rainway name for its app that ironically, for it's an app that was ironically removed from the Xbox One on Microsoft's request. Rainway specializes in streaming content to browsers, and Microsoft used Rainway's SDK to enhance and streamline Xbox Cloud Gaming technology. Microsoft is one of Rainway's first app service partners. Rainway only announced that it would offer its SDK to partners last month. So getting Microsoft as a client this early is a major accomplishment. Xbox Cloud Gaming launched in a limited beta today. And at this point, it's invite only. Look your boy up. So if you if you haven't received an invite yet, you'll have to wait to try it out. So Microsoft is inviting Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members to try out the service. So if you're a subscriber, you should check your inbox 
from the email address attached to your Microsoft account. So we talked about this a little bit at the top. So just to kind of continue on this, obviously Microsoft partnered up with Rainway to develop the technology that they're using to bring the cloud streaming service to browsers. And people may ask, well, why is that a big deal? Well, it's a big deal on iOS because Apple has barred the Xbox app, the Xbox Game Pass app, whatever you ever want to call it, from being used on their store because of review practices. They wanted each game individually reviewed and that just wasn't practical at all. We obviously know the big thing with Fortnite that Epic has had been going back and forth um, with Apple as well. And Microsoft obviously got kind of got caught up in some of that too. So the compromise was kind of like GeForce Now is already doing, Stadia is doing it as well. Microsoft developed a browser app that can use the iOS Safari app and you'll be able to access all your cloud games via via that avenue so um it's a workaround but it seems like it's working like i said the beta is rolling out today so we'll start seeing some real world feedback here over the next couple of days about how that is actually working like we mentioned before because it's on browser it also is working on safari on windows 10 for chrome obviously microsoft's own edge browser and if you're a mac user the safari browser on there will work as well so again i'm excited for it um like we talked before I, I'm a believer in cloud gaming, just not a believer as it being the primary way that you play games. So seeing this come to iOS, come to my iPad, I'm excited for it because I, I was in the previous beta they had a year ago where it was limited just to the uh, Master Chief collection. And I used to play it on my iPad all the time, just link up my uh, my uh, Xbox controller via Bluetooth and just, just play from there. So I'm excited to see it return. I'm excited to see it now open to all the Game Pass games that are available on cloud and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. So Gary, again, I'm curious um, about your participation. Are you looking forward to doing some of this as well? It's funny because I um, I was like, oh, when you were talking about this, I, was like, oh, I didn't get an invite either. What the hell? And then you said, oh, it's the, it's the, um, it's the email that's attached to your Xbox Live account. I was like, oh shit, that's a different email. Let me go right. check that. Opened it. Fuck all there either. So whatever. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. Nothing with Gary or Paris today. Uh, I am. I am excited to um, to 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 check it out though. Um, again, this is all part of their. Again, they just want to make games available. They want to make their games like basically impossible to avoid. And so um, I, again, I, I think it's great. I think uh, the technology is only going to get better with time. Again, right now it's still. It, it's actually impressive. It's actually pretty impressive considering it's still technically in some kind of beta it's not they see they're doing this right this is what where xcloud did this right they said here's a beta it's going to be rough but help us make it better and when it's ready it's ready as opposed to google who had a beta product it's just where uh, well, here's a sh we'll put it in a shiny box and slap a hundred buck uh, price on it like it's a finished product and that's why stadia is at this point i think doomed they could have it's so frustrating they could have saved it if they'd have just called it a beta or early access or waited another six months for it to actually be 1.0 could have made all the difference in the world, but I've said it a million times. You only get one chance to make a first impression, and they fucked it up. Um, Microsoft's doing I, I a much disagree. better, creating a positive. You, you disagree? You think I, Stadia has a bright future? No, no, no. <laughs> no, not in that way. I slightly disagree with you in the sense that I don't even think slapping a beta tag on it would have been enough. The fun, and again, just my opinion, but the fundamental problem for me with Stadia was they were charging you sixty dollars per game. Like there wasn't some kind of kind of game pass esque subscription model to oh be for able sure to i mean yeah, i mean games. it was yeah. it was it was flawed in any in any in any number of ways yeah. and, I, and i did you can't you can't charge someone from a, for a subscription yeah and then charge for games or sell ads like you can't double dip like that people people are wise to that these days we understand what value is um and you know there's a there are enough other competing offerings out there that you don't get to, to do that people are going to stay away but yes yeah, so, i mean again there's a long laundry list of, of issues why stadia um, didn't succeed and companies like Microsoft and you know maybe Amazon as well are looking at that and going right let's not do that right Stadia has actually been like a great you know case study of what not to do which I think is going to help these other you know cloud services kind of avoid some of the same uh, pitfalls again still uh, still early days uh, for a lot of for a lot of this stuff that Microsoft is doing I do look forward to being able to to, to check it out because again I think there's all kinds of case studies where I would, you know, I would benefit from, from these services and I want them to work. And I'm excited to see that they are, again, they seem to be making a real effort to roll this out in the right way. So good for them.
Yeah, completely agree. I've, I've loved the strategy that they've taken with this so far, where they're not shoving it down your throat and they're being pretty upfront about it's a beta, it's not perfect, but we want to get real world feedback from it so we can make it a better service. I mean, so here's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very much an Apple household. So when they first, you know, as a Mac, I have a PC here is where I play my games, but I have a Mac behind me where I work. You know, we have Apple TVs and iPhones and things all over the house. It's just, you know, it's just how the house has always yeah. been rigged up is all the Apple stuff. We like the way it all just kind of seamlessly generally interconnects. Um, but yeah, so when I heard, that, oh, this is not going to be available on Apple right away, I was really bummed out about it. Um, so I'm glad that I'm glad they are finally, I understand the, the, the kind of the, the corporate reasons why they've been, been, you know, um, uh, delayed on that i'm glad they have now finally found a solution or a workaround or something um and, th and it's something that they needed to do as well like android is by far the bigger market android's the number one operating system in the world it's yeah, bigger than windows literally. it's massive it's everywhere and so i understand why well, you've got to check that box first but particularly in the us if you want to you you cannot ignore iphone even demographically i saw a thing the other day um, and I don't remember the exact age range, but among young people, whether it's like Gen Z's or if they're also including millennials, nine out of 10 iPhone, nine out of 10 amongst young people that, and, and guess who plays games, Paris, young, young motherfucking people. people. Yeah. I mean, people of all ages, but a lot of young people play games, not just people like us, not just old dads like you and me, young people play games, young people are on iPhone in the U S that's a big market segment. They had to check that box. And so I'm glad they found a way to do it. Completely agree. Now, let's take a pause from the news, and in the interim, let's get some words from our sponsors. So, Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by DoorDash. You want Chinese, they want pizza, and someone is craving Froyo. There's something for everyone on DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. And now, you can get the grocery essentials you need with DoorDash, too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with a contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Australia, and now Canada, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, let me say Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and you enter code GAMES2021. I'll say that again, GAMES2021. For our Canadian listeners, use code GAMESCA. That's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code GAMES2021 in the U.S. and GAMESCA in Canada. Don't forget, that's code GAMES2021 for the U.S. and GAMESCA for Canada for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. And this episode is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Are you running out of shows to watch? Would you like to access? Would you like access to the next upcoming anime or British crime drama? Yes, I would really like to watch Demon Souls. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so you can control where you want sites to think you're located. Open the app, select a location, tap one button to connect and refresh the page to access thousands of new shows and movies. Choose from almost 100 different countries. Watch Studio Ghibli films on UK Netflix. Watch anime on Japanese Netflix. Watch Doctor Who on UK Netflix. This works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and more. You can stream in HD no problem, no buffering or lag. It's compatible with all your devices, phones, laptops, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. Not only does it let you change your location, it also encrypts your data and lets you surf the web safely and anonymously. Anonymously? I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm from the <laughs> South. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash games to get an extra 
three months of ExpressVPN for free. ExpressVPN.com slash games. And finally, this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. I know a certain person on the spot on me that could really use this. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, <laughs> pre-measured ingredients and mouth warding seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy. Yeah, someone really needs it and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet option. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness. Yeah, someone really needs this and simplicity. HelloFresh has a wide variety of easy, delicious options for all three meals a day, plus every snack and special treat in between. Kind of Funny loves HelloFresh, and many of us on the team, like Blessing and Tim, me too, because I like HelloFresh, they're awesome, have used it to make home cooking nutritional and easy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 12 games, that is one, two games, and use code 12 games for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 12 games with the code 12 games for 12 free meals, including free shipping. America's number one meal kit. Now, let's go back to the news. That's a lot to say. This is my first time doing this. I'm like, well, Jesus, You're that's doing- a lot. Am I doing all right? I don't know. I just talk. You did I'm a great. talker. You did great. <laughs> I actually zoned out during the ad read because I'm watching, while you were doing that, I'm watching some guy on Twitch play Pac-Man 99 and I'm learning yeah. some strats. Some nice. pro strats. Nice. Very this guy's nice. doing good. Hold on, I, I get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I, he's, oh no, he's dead. Okay, that's good. He, I, I, I worried that I was gonna be distracted seeing how far he got. He, he, you were he, um, worried he you were gonna be distracted, numbers. like too distracted to do the show, huh? Yeah, as as opposed to me being usually dialed in and 100 percent focused, uh, <laughs> right, as is my right, normal right. style of doing the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God bless you, that's Angel. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the last three bits of news that we have here, and these will probably go pretty quick. So, story number four. Square Enix to make announcements at E3 2021. This is via Jimatsu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I tried to grab the Japanese site, so I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is Jimatsu. Hope it is. Hope I'm saying it right. But they are saying Square Enix will exhibit E3 2021, where it will make new announcement. Company president and CEO Yosuke Matsuda told, is it Nikai? I think it's Nikai. I'm screwing up, but either way, you, you get it. The whole point of this is, Gary, here's another big publisher. They're going to be at E3 2021. They're going to have some major announcements. You know, I foolishly a few weeks ago came on Kind of Funny Daily with yourself and Greg and announced that these companies aren't going to say anything at E3. They're still going to do their own things. Why would they do it at E3? That makes no sense. I was a thousand percent wrong. Everything's happening at E3. They're all going to do it during that weekend. And I was wrong. So I lose the bet. I think I owe you a steak dinner whenever the world opens back up. But your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, again, I I agree with you. Even though you weren't right in this case, I still believe that you're right in principle. That I don't think, again, I, I really don't understand the point of E3 at this point. I think that, you know, the, it's, it's, it's great for indie developers. And for that reason alone, you know, for smaller developers that usually wouldn't have um, you know, a big communal spotlight for them to highlight their games. I think that's great. My favorite thing when I would go uh, to E3 or P- PAX, as I still go to, is to go to the little, you know, the the indie area where it's just like it's almost like walking through like a like a Middle Eastern bazaar of of, of great indie games where everyone's saying, "Try this, try this," and they're handing you things. And then when you come sit down and try their strange little game, and it's you know, what, what's down this little alleyway, you know, and you can go down and find some some wonderful little game you otherwise never would have discovered. Those those kind of little um voyages of discovery are great like for me e3 it's not about the big you know disney and nintendo and sony booths like we all know what they've got we get it but i want to go into the little the nooks and crannies the kentia halls and find all the weird stuff so i think for that reason alone you know the the big shows i think probably still have a reason to exist they they who they increasingly don't have a reason to exist for is companies like microsoft and sony and nintendo and and ea and activision and ubisoft 
who are increasingly realizing that hey our games are are, are big enough that if we just do our own event we don't need we don't need a third party right. spotlight on us we, right. we 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 create our own if if we want to announce a new assassin's creed or a new overwatch or a new you know call of duty guess what people are tuning in they don't need e3 as a reason to come tune in right nintendo does its directs sony now does stay to play uh, EA has its EA Play events. People are tuning in, so I think there. I, again, I I still think that I, I think you're right, Paris. I'm just if anything, you're. Let's put it this way: you weren't wrong, Paris. You were just ahead of your time. This is this is you're going to turn out to be right in the end. E3 is going. I think going to become increasingly less and less relevant until eventually it's just something. We, I remember when E3 was a thing, but like now it's gone, and these companies are just doing their own their own thing. Um, so you know, excited to see what Square is has got coming. Um, We'll we'll see. I, you know, if they've got major announcements, that presumably means they've got stuff to show that we don't even know about yet. Which is again, that's that's the stuff that I like at E3. We, 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 or, or whenever they do one of these events, we talked about this I think last week on the Xcast, where it's like, oh, what are they going to show? Are we going to see more of? You know, when we talked about um, Xbox recently at E3, so oh, are we going to see more of Starfield? Are we going to see more of Fable? Yeah. Well, maybe, and those are the games that we already know about, but what, I, what is always exciting to me is like, what's the thing they're going to announce that we're just now hearing about for the first time? Because you know they have that stuff too. And what's going to what's going to be the one more thing? What's going to be the new things? Oh, we didn't even know this was coming. That's the stuff I'm excited about. And you know, hopefully Square has some of that for us. Yeah, same. And that's kind of my thing. It's it's the unknown that that excites me about it. And hey, if they're still going to do these things during the E3 window, Hey, I'm all for it. It's obviously a format that, that we've had for a few decades now, but kind of like you're saying, I do think eventually, you know, we're going to see more and more announcements happen outside of E3 just because these companies, you know, they, they, they have the capabilities now to talk directly to their audience. So it may be interesting to see, but at least for now, I'm wrong and, and I'll own that. Now, we got a bonus breaking news because this actually happened while we've been talking. So this is from IGN and Jeff Kaplan, the director of Overwatch, has announced he is leaving Blizzard Entertainment after nearly 20 years with the company. In a personal message, Kaplan announced his departure from Blizzard Entertainment after 19 years. You can read his full letter below. So here's what he said. Greetings, Overwatch community. I'm leaving Blizzard Entertainment after 19 amazing years. It was truly the honor of a lifetime to have the opportunity to create worlds and heroes for such a passionate audience. I want to express my deep appreciation to everyone at Blizzard who supported our games, our game teams, and our players. But I want to say a special thanks to the wonderful game developers that shared in the journey of creation with me. Never accept the world as it appears to be, always dare to see it for what it could be. I hope you do the same. GG, Jeffrey Kaplan. So interesting. Um, I'm not an Overwatch player. I understand the the popularity of this. Clearly, uh, Jeff Kaplan being a director of that, it had a huge influence on on Overwatch. And, you know, uh, I, I think being an old geezer myself, I can totally understand after being with the company almost 20 years, wanting to do something else. So, you know, hey, God bless him, I say, and I guess it'll be interesting to see uh, what's next for him. What, what are your thoughts, Gary? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's not great news for Blizzard. Obviously, Jeff Kaplan, one of the leading lights there for a long time. Overwatch is obviously a hugely successful game for them. You know, it's 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 hard to launch a completely new franchise and have it be uh, a hit. But if, you know, Blizzard did it with Overwatch. They brought something fresh to that scene. You know, it's now very popular in the esports scene as well. I think everything that they wanted to achieve with Overwatch, they've done that and then some. Uh, and obviously Jeff Kaplan was one of the big reasons why that had happened. So, you know, it's going to be, it's not great news for, you know, congratulations to Jeff and whatever he's going to do next. Obviously never great news for a company to lose one of its, you know, kind of leading uh, creative talents. Been there for 19 years. Like you say, it could just be, you know, it's time for the next thing, whatever. I've got itchy feet. I want to do something else. But you also have to look at this in the context of, you know, again, I, I think that Blizzard has been struggling ever since Activision bought them. I remember when the news first happened thinking, well, Blizzard had a good run um, and, you know, they've continued to do well, even under Activision's um, ownership. But I don't think it's the company it used to be. Um, I think they're still capable of making great games, but I worry a little bit that just a little bit of the Blizzard magic has been lost under the under the corporate ownership of um of blizzard it's not you know we've seen a lot of people late paul sams 
Mike Morhaim, Chris Metz, and Rob Pardo, some of the some of the many of the people that made Blizzard what it was um, and grew it to the company that that it became are no longer there. Um, and Jeff Kaplan's just the leading latest example of that. I don't know if any of this is to do with you know kind of dis dissatisfaction um, with the with the direction that Blizzard is going in under Activision's ownership. I I do know for a fact that 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 many of the people that that used to work there were not happy with how the company has been right. managed under Activision. I think that's that's going to be an ongoing uh, problem. Um, but, you know, I don't want to read too much into this. Uh, Jeff, Ka you know, let, let's just take a moment to appreciate everything that Jeff Kaplan did for Blizzard and for gamers. Uh, Overwatch in particular, just a phenomenal game. One of the few first person shooters that I still occasionally enjoy playing because it's just such a, t a ton of fun. Excited about the sequel. Blizzard is a, definitely a poorer company for, for his loss, but I wish Jeff well in uh, whatever he does next. We'll be excited to be. Hopefully we'll be back, back here reporting what he's doing next very soon. Agreed. Agreed. Definitely don't want to read into this too much other than to say just wish him well. And like I said, I'll be excited to see what's next for him. Now, I'm a talker, so we're literally almost out of time on the show. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to speed through the last two bits of news. And one of them was, again, IGN, the Dice Awards is going to be April 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific. And that is going to be co-hosted by Jessica Chobot, our own Greg Miller, and that guy that doesn't know how to cook, Khalif Adams. And I just wanted to wish all three of them well with that as a very prestigious event. And uh, I'm excited to see them host it. Now, the last one was one that you added, Gary, and maybe we can talk about this in detail in the after show or something like that. But Polygon had an article up talking about Power Wash Simulator. Simulates the never ending satisfaction, satisfaction of well, power washing. And again, us both being old people, I think uh, we can appreciate power washing. So um, again, maybe we can talk about this in the after show or something somebody, like somebody that. Somebody said, I just got over this because somebody sent it to you this morning again. Hey, you're a dad. You like dad content, right? Like how about a pressure washing simulator? It is on Steam. It's called Power Wash Simulator. Um, uh, if anyone's ever used a pressure washer or a power washer or enjoyed as I have, the YouTube videos that are just like ASMR satisfaction of people like power washing, like filthy brick walls and, and patio uh, tile and things like that. This is a game that simulates that. And honestly, I'm so here for it, Paris. I, I, yeah, I this is the too. fastest I have ever put a game <laughs> on my steam wish list. I'm very excited about it. So go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Gary, that last bit of news, power washing, you know, it's still so far away. If I wanted to know what is coming to mom and pop, shops today where would i look the official list of upcoming software as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday don't need to go do 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 yeah or With something Kevin, yeah. Kevin yeah. Yeah. yeah oh there he is <laughs> i i don't do the the oh no that was part. no that was no, no, i just no, said that the, yeah. if you yeah. want yeah. i could do this you, either, oh, you either have to you either have to do the do 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 do's or you play there the you go. Getty. i like it I like the it. Tim Gettys version. All right. Well, out today. This is a short list. MLB The Show 21 for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. New dates for things upcoming. Humankind on April 22nd for Windows 10 and Stadia. Fogs, and that is with a PH. Fogs is coming April 22nd. That's a fun Windows game, 10. by the way, Fogs. Oh, I have to check it out. I just saw it. And I was like, "What is this? I don't know what it is." I'll have to it's check on Game it Pass. Out. Is it? There you it go. Certainly Game is. Pass again. And then we have is it near replicant version one dot two two four seven four four eight seven one three nine is coming on April twenty third to Windows ten, PlayStation four, and Xbox One. Now, moving on to deals of the day. There are NES controllers for the Switch, which you can get for $41.99 on the Nintendo Store, but this will require that you have a Switch Online membership. You can also go to the Nintendo eShop via Newegg and get a $50 gift code using code 4APRVTCH242. And the PlayStation DualSense wireless controller is $45.67 via the Amazon warehouse. Now we had reader mail, I read one already, we're running out of time, but I wanna thank everyone again for sending in messages. Go to patreon.com forward slash kind of funny games if you want to have your question read on the show. Now, Gary, we are wrapping this up here because we are out of time. 
Um, we didn't have a squad up. Um, I'm going to see if we have a you're wrong doing this in real time. I, I, and, we, I, I never get anything wrong. So yeah. Don't worry about it. So looks like um, the standard edition, it will be the show 20. Uh, no. Yeah, we got that. We're good on that. Uh, yeah, the Blizzard thing we already talked about. Gary touched on the Super League earlier. Update regarding that Sky News understands Chelsea are preparing documents to formally withdraw something. Oh, crap. I got to open up this whole thing to see. Withdraw from the Super League. Yeah, to withdraw from the Super League. That's what he's saying. And then the nanobiologist is saying, not video game news, but Gary. Ch yeah, everyone's just uh, talking about that. Oh, and then finally, this is probably more for me because I'm a huge Destiny guy. Uh, Guardian Games is uh, starting today. And also Apple is literally doing their event right now. It might even be over at this point, but uh, not bad. We didn't get too much wrong. So that's good. And um, I think, is that it? Are we good? Is that the show? Um, I guess now leading into this, uh, before we get out of here, if you want to stick around here on twitch.tv forward slash kind of funny games, you are going to have Mike, Andy, Nick, and Tim play Mount Your Friends 3D. So please stick around for that and enjoy. So I think that's it, Gary. I think I just hosted my first show. So I don't know you how did I great. did. You did great. I don't know if you were... I don't know if you were nervous or anything before the show. You certainly didn't see me. I thought you killed it. I hope you come back and do it again soon. Finally... I don't know. I just, I just, I just read the stuff that Greg gave me and tried to put my own spin on it. So I hope people good. enjoyed it. Hope, you did I, good. hope people enjoyed it. But um, that's it. I think we're going. We're going to go into the post show now. And uh, obviously, if you're a uh, part of our Patreon, you can check that out there. Is that it? Is that how I do it? Is that how I end it? Thank everyone. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Usually, end, uh, I don't Greg know. usually you, you, Greg usually has some kind of catchphrase. You you know if you're gonna if you do do this regularly, you need to come out. I guess with like your own <laughs> catchphrase. Said do do. You yeah, hear that? Yeah. yeah. Do, no, I said do do. Yeah, it's funny. It's All right, bye. I, I, I'm gonna I, just I, cut I, it. All right, cool. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs>